Good morning. Welcome to the new FFL Sky's the Limit podcast. We have an inaugural podcast today with one of my buddies, uh, Mr. Brandon Kitchings. Um, I'm jacked because, you know, with this new podcast, we're going to be able to reach more people, right? Um, You know, at conference just a few weeks ago, the amount of people that came up and said, hey, this podcast has helped me do this part of the business, do that part of the business. It's taught me how to do senior mortgage. It's taught me how to sell virtually. I'm like, okay, I got to definitely be able to teach people or or not cancel it. We got to just leave it on. Right. So I'm jacked to be able to do this. And, um, you know, we're going to rebrand it. We're going to call it sky's the limit for sky point. So just in case you guys were wondering, but um, I got a good friend of mine, my brother uh, from another mother, Mr. Brandon kitchen, Brandon, you there? Yes, sir. I'm here, man. Um, hey, dude. I'm, thanks for hopping on, man, because I know it's early for some folks, but not for you. You've been no. up for three hours. Hey, I've been, I've been to the gym. I've got my workout in, you know, um, you know, got my uh, my mind right, you know, ready for the day, man. Exactly. So let's uh, let's hop into it. So, you know, the topic today is, you know, you, you you're a Hall of Fame producer, meaning you helped over 400 families last year, Family First Life. But I think you got one of the most unique stories. And and what I mean by that is you were doing everything face to face as a lot of us were. And then eventually you made a switch to go, hey, I'm going to learn how to do this thing virtually. And when I say virtual, telesales, Zoom, all that stuff, right? Not just one or the other, but just not being with the client is what I consider virtual, remote. Um, How was that like? Because that's what I feel like a lot of people are struggling with right now, Brandon, is they are like scared to make that transition. They're one foot in, one foot out. Um, I mean, I, and, and I can understand that, you know, um, you know how, how they may be a little um, reserved about, about making the decision. You know, for me, it was one of those things where, you know, it, it came out, out of need. I, right. I had to do it, you know, in order to keep my business moving at that time. And like I tell people um, all the time, if you would have asked me six months ago, about virtual sales, you know, we had this conversation. I would have said it don't work, you know. <laughs> right. I'd be like, it don't work. Don't try it, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, because I, you know, because I, you know, I, I tried it a little bit back in 2020 and didn't have the success that I'm having now, you know. So in my mind, you know, I, I had made up my mind that it didn't work. However, this time around, it was out of necessity, you know, um, having to be out of the field for a couple weeks um, while taking care of some personal things and you know, leads are steady rolling in, you know, if you have, you know, um, you know, mailers and campaigns out there, the, the leads keep coming, whether you're working or not, right. <laughs> you know, and your bank account keeps doing this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I had to do it out of necessity and figure it out for myself. So, um, so, I, so going into it, it was more of a, Hey, I have to make it work, you know? And, and, and so how, how can I, set it up to be successful for myself at this time. And so I was able to put a plan together, um, you know, to actually make it work. And the good thing is, you know, I closed my first, or I helped my first family, right? You know, um, the very first time I I tried it and the light switch just kind of clicked on right there. You know, that's the the beauty of it, right? Like family first life and as an industry as a whole, but primarily family first life, we're always adjusting and growing and changing. Um, Because Brandon's 100% corrective. I mean, you would have hopped on a new agent call six months ago. We were annihilating people for doing virtual sales. And now it's kind of like when I hire agents, I don't want them to be in the field. I want them strictly to be on virtual. And and you go, well, Steve, well, it's called adapting. We're in business. That's what happens. We we move with the tide, right? So um, one of the things that I think, and I want to dive deeper into this in, in a little bit, Brandon, but you know, for me, virtual sales, remote sales, whatever you want to call it, consists of three different ways to do it. And there's the one call closes, which you're phenomenal at. Yeah. Live transfers costs a lot, but there's some profitable p- people doing that. And then the traditional way of just calling mortgage protection, final expense leads and booking them tomorrow, like you would be in the field. Yeah. Which aspects are you primarily doing or are you doing all three? Uh, a, a little bit of all three, but the main two um, is the one call close, of course, mm-hmm. um, and then booking the appointment. Right. You know, so for me, I'm, um, the, the original call is to close on the first call. Right. Uh, and if you if, if your spouse isn't with you. Right. I'm not going to do a one legger. Right. Okay? Done enough of those to, to 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 understand it. It doesn't work. 
okay? You like, as wasted as we can, okay? Um, and, and secondly, you know, if you're at work, you know, you're out and about, you're not somewhere, you know, um, where we can actually really dig into it, dive into it at this time, then I'm going to book the appointment like normal. Okay, um, so for me, those are the, the two main things. Um, I have done the, uh, some live transfers um, and, and I do like them, you know, however, like you said, they are a little costly, you know, so for me, I'm, I'm seeing a better ROI, you know, just, just pick, just calling the lead and, and doing a one call close or booking the appointment versus, you know, sitting and taking live transfers all day. Right. And see, that's the other thing, right, Brandon, there's a part of being in business where you're reactive and proactive. So like you're up, if you're doing live transfers, you're reactive, meaning you're re you're waiting for the lead vendor send you calls. Yeah. And if they, like I've been in an office where an agent has 20 states and they literally take zero phone calls for the whole day. Like I wouldn't run my business that way. No, me personally. The, you know, the proactive way is the one call closes. You're on the phone, you're on phone burner, you're making calls out, you know, to clients and trying to close them right then and there or booking them for a later time that day or booking them for a, a time tomorrow. But that's the proactive. And see, like in sports, right? It's like, I mean, I didn't play football, but I, I understand the concept is like, you want to hit them first before they hit you. <laughs> and that's, that's kind of like what we do in business. You want to be on the offensive. You don't want to be on the defensive where you're, you're waiting to get hit or you're waiting for, you know, the, the reaction. So um, let's dive deep into those. Like, let's say you hired yourself right now. You're a brand new agent. Um, you hire yourself. What does your lead strategy look like? Or what are you telling a brand new agent? Um, for me, it, it, it all, it all depends. I mean, I, I love the, I love the, the telesales, mm -hmm. but for me, for a brand new agent, if you've never done this before, okay. If you've never, um, sell, sold insurance in the past, so you don't have a grasp on concepts and things like that. I'm very big on you starting in the field. Gotcha. Okay. Um, a hybrid route. Yes. We, we go a hybrid route. We get you in the field first, um, because, you're going to be able to overcome your newness a lot better in the field. And you, and you know, right. It's, it's, yeah, the clients are a lot more forgiving in the home than they're going to be over the phone. Right. You know, um, we all, you know, do things over the phone. If you get somebody on the phone that's helping you and they're like, they don't know what they're doing. Oh, you, you're like, hold up. Something ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, so in the home, you know, they're, they're a lot more forgiving. Right. Um, you know, I remember my first time, you know, my first couple of months, you know, in the field, I was, I would tell every client, Hey, I'm new. I'm new. I'm nervous. You know, I, you know, however, you know, I'm here to help you. I, I, rep, I, I represent great companies and I have great support. That's going to make sure whatever we do today, Ms. Jones is going to be the best thing for you. Does that make sense? Yep. And Ms. Jones is like, yes, yes, baby. That, that, that makes sense. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so she, she's going to be okay with me not knowing everything at this time, as long as I can get the answer. Right. right? You know, she's okay with that. Um, but in, over the phone, you're not going to get that leeway. You, you know, you're not going to be able to tell them, hey, I, I just started. I don't know what I'm doing. You know, right. they're gonna be like, give me your supervisor. Yes. Right. You know, um, so for me, it's about, you know, getting in the field first, you know, um, overcoming some some things, you know, seeing all the um, the, the ups and downs that you're going to get in the home and then transitioning to the phone or starting with the with the hybrid method. And now, if if you have a little experience, we can get right into the telesales. Right. Okay. Um, and and with that, the lead flow, you know, it's, it's all about the, the the Internet leads. You know, that's that's what's going to allow you to be, you know, the most profitable um, out of the out of the gates as well. Um, you know, when we when I started it was twenty five dollars, you know, lead, you know, for right. Facebook leads. You know, uh, you spend, you know, getting 20 leads for five hundred dollars, you know, <laughs> Brandon, don't buy 20 leads. Don't buy 20 leads. <laughs> <laughs> <you do>. I 40. <laughs> for real. You that know, again. <laughs> but now, you know, now that we have these these internet, these internet leads, these uh, one month old instant internet leads, you know, 11 bucks, um, four bucks, and then using your work spots, you're getting them even even cheaper. That's going to allow you to. Um, lower your, you know, your, I would say your, your risk, your financial risk in the beginning. 
right? Um, and make it a little bit easier when you don't help a family. If it's right. if it only costs you three dollars not to help that family, right? You can get them that a lot easier than twenty five dollars, right? Or you eighty know, for a mortgage lead, or eighty bucks, right? You know what? You know what we pay for a mortgage lead. So for me, it's about getting into the internet lead, stacking the deck in your favor. You know, I'm big on that. Yep. Um, you know, that's what really allowed me to take the top off of my business once I understood the concept of stacking the deck in my favor. You know, and that means, you know, whatever amount of leads you think you need, we get double. OK, you know, we, we, we double that amount and, and we pretty much guarantee the, su the success of, of the number that we need to hit at this time. Right. You know, the other thing I like about virtual, Brandon, is this, right? Like you might live in a state like where you live, where I used to live, where if I wanted local leads, it's no inventory. Yeah. But when you get a run virtual, your entire playground is the United States. Right. And so, like, for example, like, let's say Brandon, Brandon's an early bird. He's up four in the morning. He's at the gym. He's yeah. done by like five, six. If Brandon wanted to turn some leads on in the East Coast, because nobody's awake in Phoenix, but everybody in the East Coast is nine, eight, nine o'clock. Brandon can start working already. He's two hours ahead of the game. Let's just say it's later in the evening. Right. It's nine, ten o'clock at night. He can turn on leads in Hawaii. Yeah. And he can close over there. See, the beauty of virtual leads is you can be anywhere. <laughs> Right. The other thing that I've realized about virtual, too, is cost. And what I mean by that is, like, in my opinion, my opinion personally, someone that sells 30 grand a month virtually is more profitable than someone that sells 40 grand a month face to face. Yes. Can't argue with me on that. There's no gas. There's no flights, hotels. You know what? The other thing that's cheaper that I just realized, too, Brandon, What's what that? costs more statewide final expense or, or local final expense? Local local by like five to 10 bucks a lead. Yeah. So like on your lead bill alone, you're saving money. You get yeah. more bang for your buck when you go statewide and some lead vendors get to go, Hey, if you let me run, you know, three to four States at once, I'll take that lead at like half. Right. And so for me, that's why for, like you said, I just want more shots at the rim. I want to stack the deck in my favor. I want to be able to have all that. Yes, and, and that's the beauty of it. And then you got folks that are, you know, that are scared of COVID, like agents right. themselves or clients themselves. You also got folks like we have an agent that we're working with. He's currently battling, you know, a, a terminal illness, but he still wants to sell some life insurance. He can't go meet with someone in, you know, their house. Yeah. His, his immune system's compromised. You know, the other thing, women, women, I mean, women do phenomenal in life insurance, but some women it's scary for them to walk into a stranger's house, especially when they don't know them and it's a man. Right. But on virtual, it doesn't matter. Right. So there's a lot of benefits. And that's where I see the, the, the you know, the industry is going to. Right. And kind of like you, you adapted and you went from boom, first half of the year, you went face to face. Boom. Second half of the year, you went virtual. The other thing that's nice, Brandon, and I, I see this, this is the reason why I love it. You know, what the nice part about virtual is for you and Colton. With that, not home every night with your family, man. Yeah, you ain't living in a hotel no more, dude. No, no, I, that's I mean, a big deal for me. And, and and I can see the difference, you know, you know, in in my house, in in the family, you know, um, the kids are happy to see me every night. They know I'm going to be home, you know, every evening. Yeah. Versus, you know, the traditional, hey, dad is leaving. You know, when you're going to be back? And I'm going for four days. Four days. And yep. down the day, you know, for me to come back home. You know, um, I think um, yeah, a little bit, I think they're, they're a little, they're a little disappointed with me going virtual because they got used to getting a gift every time I, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I would bring them something back, you know, from that state or wherever I was at, you know, so they, they were used to that. But, but the biggest thing for me is I, I was, I know I was spending at least, you know, five to seven grand a month just on travel. Yeah. So you think about the pressure. Right. If you didn't book enough appointments, you couldn't go. Yes. But if you put one virtual appointment, it don't matter. You're going because you're at home. Correct. The pressure is not the same. And, and the other thing, too, is like, you know, lead flow. Like if you want to run a, a travel trip back then, you would have to wait for leads to stack up. Well, leads stacking up means you're not calling them immediately. Which also means you're getting beat, probably getting beat in the, door. In, in the home, beat to the mm -hmm. door. 
you know, um, by sitting on them for, you know, a week or two while you're waiting on them to stack up. So that was another big thing that I, that I realized by going, by going this route. Um, because you, of course, you know, I was, I was traveling. So I was sitting on the leads for two, three weeks, calling them. We're going to run the appointments. I would get at least four or five, um, clients every trip that somebody had already beat me to the door. Already taken care of. Yeah. And, and they, and they've already, they're spending, you know, Good to, premium. Yeah, good premium, right? You know, to protect their family. And I'm like, mm, you know, it just hurts. Like it really, <laughs> you know, it hurts. But now, you know, being able to call them as soon as the lead comes in yep. and be the first one, be the first first one in front of them, you know, it, it definitely changed the game on that. Right. And, and it's just it's just healthy for the family to be able to be home for dinner every night. Yeah. Just there's there's no other way to say it. Now I'm not saying like for some of you guys that want to grind and go travel, do it, please. But like there's some people that they already done that. And, and, you know, like, I'll be honest, like during my Hall of Fame run, dude, it was getting old driving four hours, one direction, and then back four hours the next day and sleeping in a hotel. Like it got old. It got old really quick. You had to do it because that's our job is to provide for our family. But it got old, yes. you know. And so like what I love about it, like, you know, I've been talking to Colton pretty much about this because he was like, hey, I wrote, you know, this much. I protected this amount of families last year face to face in 2022. I'm doing everything, you know, virtual. And I'm like, really? He's like, I sold my car. He's like, I sold my car that I usually drive to Oklahoma with. And I'm like, really? He's like, I just bought my dream truck. And I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? But it, but stuff like that, like think about the mileage, the wear and tear on the vehicles. Like nobody thinks about that stuff. No. Those are our business expenses too that you guys got to factor in. You know, you blow out a tire, you, you know, your engine goes out, your transmission goes out. Like, because we're putting 30, 40,000 miles a year on the car right now. You, your commute is office home, office home. Yep. You know? Yeah. So the other thing too, is now you get to travel, but you know, kind of like I saw you get to travel the last two times is you're bringing the kids with you now because yep. you can work anywhere. Correct. You spend the holidays with your family in South Carolina, you can bring the whole family with you. So that's a, you know, back then it's Brandon by himself, yep. you know? So let's dive into, um, you know, the phone script, the front end of everything. Let's just, it doesn't matter what lead you're calling. Does your, okay. does your lead, your, see, this is the other thing that bothers me. I don't have a phone script for every type of lead out there. I have one phone script. I change one line, yep. right? How do you do your phone script for virtual? How does that sound like? Same thing. You know, I just, the only thing changes in is the front end, the, you know, the intro. Um, but if we're, you know, if we're calling this, you know, ring, ring. Hello. Steven. Yep. Hey brother, don't hang up. I'm not a telemarketer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, have to baby um hey my name is brandon man just getting back to you regarding um the mortgage protection form you filled out you hand filled out and sent back to our office this was for your loan uh with loan depot mm -hmm. all right uh just calling to verify a little bit of the information i'm just the uh, local underwriter assigned to get the information out to you Stephen. i'm um, looking here i'm showing date of birth as six six three uh seventy four correct yep all right. Looks like non-tobacco as well. Yep. All right. And then I have a spouse here also. Um, 7172. Uh, yep. Non-tobacco as well. Correct. All right. And a property address, 123 Main Street uh, here in Mesa. Yeah. All right. And is this your primary home or investment property? That's my primary residence. Primary. I love that line. Awesome. I used to use that a lot. Awesome. All right. So um, just to bring you up to speed, Stephen, this is the uh, mortgage disability life product designed to pay the mortgage off or pay it up in the event of death, disability, or sickness or illness. All right. All of these plans, Stephen, they're non-medical, meaning no blood, urine, or physicals required. We're not sending a nurse out on these or anything. They just require me to verify some information, ask a few questions. I'm pretty much the eyes and the ears for the insurance carriers. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. All right, Stephen. Um, and the purpose of the call today, um, not going to take much of your time. Process takes about 20 minutes, Stephen, to see exactly what you guys qualify for, go over those options with you. Um, due to the, you know, the pandemic and these variants out here, we're currently servicing clients two ways. Um, I can either come out to the property, we can do this face-to-face, -face, or we can do this over a phone call. Which option works best for you? Phone call. Phone call. All right, great. All right. And with that being said, Stephen, if we're going to do it over the phone, that's totally fine. Um, just so that I'm fully transparent with you, 100% um, honest as I am with all my clients, um, how the process goes is, you know, once we find a plan that fits your needs, and most importantly, Stephen, um, your guys' budget, 
All right, we will then be uh, submitting a request for coverage to the insurance carrier to see if you can be approved for said plan, okay? That will require us to provide the insurance company some very sensitive information, things like your driver's license uh, number, your social security number, and your bank account information that the plan would pay from. Uh, would that be a problem for you? Shouldn't. Okay, great. Are, are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah. Be cool. Okay. All right. Just just want to make sure, and just so that you so that you're aware. Before I ask you for any of that sensitive information, Stephen, you know I will be sending you you know uh, some sensitive information of my own. I'll send you a picture of my ID along with my state license, um, so that way you can verify that I am who I'm supposed to be as well. Cool. Okay. Yep. All right. So with that said, um, Stephen, is is the missus? Is she currently available with you at this time? Yeah, she is. She's sitting right next to me. Okay. All right. That's, that's great. So um, I actually have about 40 minutes before my next scheduled appointment. Um, if you, if we could go ahead and knock it out now, it takes about 20 minutes. If, if you guys have some time at this moment, let's do it. Okay. Bam. And then we'll just jump right into the appointment. Financial inventory right then and there. That's inventory. Do you know what the best part about that is? And I'm being hundred percent honest, right? Um, the best part is you're talking in your vernacular, not mine. Mm -hmm. Like you're talking how Brandon talks. Correct. That's the best part. Like scripts don't work because you didn't write them. Yeah. I wrote them. It's written how I speak. Brandon talks how Brandon talks. And here's the best part, dude. Like, and you probably don't, you probably don't even catch it. You know, the ands and the ums. That's actually really good because it doesn't sound like you're a robot. Mm -hmm. Telemarketers aren't allowed to say ands and ums. I used to, I used to be one. That's why. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because you're a human. That's, that's the reason why this works. The best part too is if we took every single Hall of Fame producer and got them on the phone and literally put them on their phone script, every phone script would sound completely different. Correct. Every single one. And that's the beauty of it is because everybody does it their way. But if you look at the structure of the phone call, it's always the same. Who I am, where I'm calling from. My job is to verify the information, right? Got to come, you know, then I'm going to set the appointment, whether I'm coming out right, right tomorrow or whatever it is, or I'm doing it right here now, right? That's it, dude. It's not that much. And everybody does that a little bit differently. Like you, you cracked a joke in the beginning. Hey, I'm not a telemarketer. Don't hang up. Like, that's funny to me. I don't do it. I know Trey does it, but I don't do it. You do it. Like, that's great. Yeah. And so that's the best part for the guys that are on this call. Like, I want you to understand is figure out what works for you. Borrow from everybody else until you make your own. Yeah. Like Brandon used the line that I literally wrote when I used to book mortgage protection, which was, is this your primary residence or is this your investment property? You want to know why I asked that? Because when we're running face-to-face, -face, I would show up to homes and they would never live there. I would knock on the door and the renter would open the door and be like, who are you? And I'm like, I have an appointment with you at five. He's like, no, I don't own the home. That dude don't even live here. And I'm like, oh, you know what I mean? But like you, you start putting things like that in your phone script or you start picking and choosing from other people that do very, very well. And you go, oh, I like that. Let me try that, you know? Right. So inside, um, let's say you're calling internet lead, right? How different is that? Uh, it's, just, it's really kind of kind of the same. You know, I, I, let's go through the intro on that one. Ring, ring. Oh, hello? Steven? Yep. Hey, don't hang up. Hey, don't hang up, brother. I'm not a telemarketer. All right. Again, my name is Brandon. Getting back to you regarding the form you filled out online for the state discounted life insurance programs. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where you put your date of birth as 7163. Yep. All right. Um, and Stephen, uh, with that being said, uh, again, I'm just the underwriter assigned to get the information out to you um, um, on that. Uh, this was for the, uh, the life insurance plans and just verifying the address here on file as well. The delivery address on this 123 Main Street there in Mesa. Yep. All right. Great. All right, Stephen, with also we're going to be coming out to you. <laughs> I apologize. Hey. But that's the thing when you when you're not so I, I dial a lot of um, a lot of mortgage so of course I'm not right, right, right at the point but the biggest thing with the with the internet lead is for me is you got to hit them with the um, you got to be direct with that next line after you let them know that you're not a telemarketer on on exactly how you got the information right mm -hmm. um, and then once once you get through that then it's verifying the the address. And then going right right into right into the um, how we're going to do it. Now with the internet lead, how I do do it a little bit differently is on the approach. I'm, I'm going to say, okay, Stephen, um, at this time, you know, we're currently servicing clients all virtual to keep everybody safe. 
Okay, so if you don't mind, if you could go and grab a, a pen and paper, it takes about 10 minutes, we're gonna go ahead and knock it out now. Nice. Okay, I'm not gonna give the option on the internet lead, you know, to come out, you know, or do it over the phone. I'm just gonna try to go ahead and push them to go ahead and, and just grab a pen and paper. OK, and let's go ahead and knock it out now. And what you and what you find with that is a lot of times they're just going to go get the paper. Like, oh, OK, hold up. Let me grab something. You know, give me a minute. Let me grab something to write with. Or they're going to say, I don't have time right now. OK, then I'll go ahead and, and book and book the appointment. OK, um, at that time to get them back on. But that's the biggest difference with the, you know, with the Internet lead. I'm going to come in who I am. Hey, getting back to you regarding the form you filled out online making sure that you know exactly, you know, where I got the information from, you know, for the state discounted life insurance program. For me, I don't like using the state regulated, you know, myself. Um, I'm, I'm state discounted. Discount. Everybody loves discounts. Everybody loves discounts. That's financial inventory. What right. discounts do you qualify for? Tobacco right. user or not, right? Right. You know, yeah. now you will get some, some of the pushback on the internet leads, you know, that you're going to get. That's what I would rather kind of tackle real quick with Go ahead. Yeah. everybody is you're going to get some pushback on those you know things like i'm not interested anymore you know i'm, I'm no longer interested right mm -hmm. and so with that you just 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 tackle that for me i'll let you know Stephen. hey brother i'm not interested either plain and simple mm -hmm. you know however you know you submitted the form i've been assigned to the i've been assigned to the file my job is just to get the information to you okay right. i got six kids to feed brother uh, so my job is to get the information to you OK, um, whatever what you do with the information is totally up to you, whether you burn it, trash it, you know, ball it up and play trash can basketball with it. Uh, I, I could care less. Right. Okay? You know, fam, my job is to get the information until you go over it with you. It takes about 10 minutes. You know, do you have that 10 minutes right now? Right. Or they're going to or they're going to say um, they've already got it taken care of. Right. With that, I'm going to pivot with. OK, that's that's totally fine. You know, that actually makes my job a little bit easier at this time. It looks like I just need to update the records, you know, on who on who you went with so we can get you deleted from the program and stop calling you, Stephen. So, right. so you mind, you know, letting me know what what company you decided to go with. Right. You know, you give me that company. Bam. OK, so um, that's actually one of the carriers here in the program, Stephen. Uh, let me ask you this, though. It's one of our that's one of the secondary carriers. Here, here mm -hmm. in the program, you know, what, what major medical issues, you know, do you currently have that warrant, wanted you to be with one of the secondary carriers and not one of the primary carriers? Right. Are right. you sick? Right. That's what Mike Schro says. Like, why right. are you sick? Why did you yeah. get that? Yeah. And then I just like to hit him with what kind of major medical issues. Right. You know, do, are, do you have cancer? You know, do you have AIDS? Are you on dialysis right now? Right. No. OK. What, what kind of issues do you have? And then they'll let you know, oh, all I have is just diabetes. OK. Mm -hmm. Well, if that's the case, so that's that's why I'm that's why your name is on my desk at this time, Stephen. It looks like there were some other some additional discounts that you that you could qualify for, um, that that was not put on the table for you. My job is just to go over those those options with you and make sure that you're able to compare at this time. Does that make sense? That makes sense. All right, it takes about ten minutes, you know, to to knock this out. You can grab pen and paper. We can go ahead and get right into it. See, that's what I love is you're very indirect. Like, yeah, dude, it's not a secret. We're trying to replace that policy with what we got. That's not a secret. No. But you know what most people do when they go, I'm not interested, or like, I already have some. They go, well, who do you got? Why do you have them? Well, that, they, that company sucks. And it's like, no, duh. Now they feel that you're going to replace them. They're not going to try to give you no information. Right. Or you're very indirect, like, oh, do you have like major medical issues or something? No. What do you got? Like, you got cancer or, you know, AIDS or HIV or dialysis? Are you on any of those things? No. I only got diabetes. Why are you on that plan? Yeah. That's very indirect, you know, yeah. and that's the beauty of it, man, is <clears throat> I see, I feel like at least brand new agents are very combative on the phone. There's a lot of pushback with, with brand new agents because they don't know how to be, you know, smooth, I guess you can say, in, in, in being able to obtain information, right? Um, like you said, I am not interested in, I'm not interested either, but I got to do it because it's my job. Yeah. Right. And the other thing, Brandon, is you're very direct. You're telling them, hey, go grab a pen and paper. Hey, can we knock this out right now? Right. You're telling them to do something. A lot of brand new agents, what I see is they ask for permission when they shouldn't be. Like a doctor doesn't ask you for permission when they check your heart with a stethoscope. They don't ask for permission when they, you know, check your vitals when you walk in. They just do it. Right. Because that's what you're supposed to do. You know what I mean? Like brand new agents go, um, is it okay if we grab a pen and paper? It's like, don't do that. No, it's not okay because I don't have time. Right? 
Like, don't, don't ask for permission, just, just do it. Right. So, um, and then, you know, the other part that I love Brandon, and, and this is like, I'm not, this is not a shot at you. This is for all you guys on the call. Brandon stumbled and he's a hall of fame producer. Yep. Meaning when you stumble, it's okay. Yeah. No one's perfect. Not at all. And that's the best part. Everybody thinks, you know what the crazy part was, Brandon, when we went hall of fame, you and I, and all the other guys that we work with, yep. everybody goes, man, they're like robots. They got this on autopilot. No, no, we don't. We just happen to work more than y'all. That's it. That's about it. Yeah. You know, um, let's dive into, you know, the lead situation. So like how many calls and how many leads you're getting on a weekly basis to be able to protect 10 families, 15 families, whatever you're doing, you're doing a lot. Right. So what is it? How many, you know, how many um, leads and, and dials are you making on dial days and all that stuff? So for me, and, and this is the biggest thing what I think, you know, people have to really understand with going virtual. Like, I think a lot of agents think it's going to be easier, you know, going going virtual versus running in the field. It's actually tougher. It's, it's actually tougher. Um, the biggest. So you're going to need the, the leads. I'm still right around the same. I was I was investing twenty five hundred you know, a week prior. I'm still investing twenty five hundred, you know, a week. So that hasn't changed. Right. However, I am making, I am making more dials. Right. Right. I'm making more dials because I because I understand I I need to get more appointments up on the board. Right. When I was running in the field, I was okay at twenty five to thirty appointments a week. I right. could even run twenty in the field and still you know protect my ten families. Right. right. But o- over the phone, I got to be at forty to forty five appointments. Right. Per week. Um. And and, and, and and all that. And again, I'm not great. I just worked you know i'm closing at like 30 percent i'm closing at like 30 percent i I booked 45 appointments i might help 15 families for the week right right you know and 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 with that i'm closing at like 30 percent you know i booked 45 i may sit on you know 37 you know 30 35 to 37 and out of those i may close 15 of them right Right. And, and because a lot of this over the phone, you, you, you're not going to be able to push like, like, like you could push in the house, you right. know, to, to push for the submission right now. Bless you. Um, you know, to push for the submission right now. Um, so what I do on the phone is I'm just very upfront with them. You know, um, you know, when they say they need to think about it and those things, you know, I'm, I'm just very upfront with that. I just address it. You right, tell me right. you need to think about it. I mean, I've already told you what we need to do at the beginning of the call, you right. know, so I'm just going to kind of bring you back to that. Remember at the beginning of the call, we said that we were going to be submitting the request. There's nothing to think about until we get approved, right. you know, and, and they're like, okay, I, yeah, I understand, but I still, we still need to talk it over and think about it. Okay. Let me just help you make sure that you understand how that decision can affect you. Okay. So I'm just going to educate them. Okay. By you thinking about it at this time, one thing that I can't guarantee to you, Stephen, is that the rate would be the same when you call me back. OK, remember, the discounted rate is good for today. We submit a, we submit the request to lock that rate. Right. OK, to lock that rate for you. So that rate doesn't change. So I can't guarantee that the rate will be the same when you call me back. OK, is that, is that clear? Right? right. You understand that? Well, other thing is, I can't guarantee that you may be able to qualify for it when you call me back because, you know, this is all about health. And without, we don't know what tomorrow brings. We're all one breath away from catching COVID or one of these variants mm-hmm. so but we know by today based on what you told me today we got a good chance to qualify you know so you call me back tomorrow all that can change we, now we can't qualify so just making sure that you understand you know what the ramifications you know can be by you thinking at this time okay and then educating you again all we're doing today Stephen, is submitting the request to see if you can be approved okay if they approve me and only if they approve OK, are they going to just going to take your first payment? They're going to process your first payment within the first within the next 48 hours to submit that contract. They're going to mail it to you. You're going to get it in about five to seven days. Once you receive it in the mail, Stephen, that will start your 30 day final decision period. OK, now you have 30 days, you know, to think about the insurance company, you know, after they've had a chance to think about you and issue that approval. OK, right, right. within that 30 days, Stephen, you have you have some options. OK, it's not locked in, so you can adjust it up or down. OK, OK, if you say, hey, I like it, but we need to take bring it down a little bit. Brand is a little bit too rich for our blood. We can bring it down. Right. You know, if you say, hey, we love it and we want some more of it, Brandon. Right. OK, we can we can we can take it up at that time. 
All right. We can also pivot to another plan if need be. And then lastly, Stephen, if for some reason you decide that you don't want to protect the missus, you don't want to protect your queen and, 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 and your number one asset here, we can cancel it. OK, and by canceling, that's going to get you a full refund back of that very first payment. That is your protection period. Your think about it, period, Stephen. Right. You know, does, does that make sense? Right? right. All right. And then also, Stephen, what I would encourage you to do is take that time to shop the plan as well. OK, so you, now, now that I've gotten you approved for certain coverages and benefits, now you can call around the other companies and say, hey, I got this and this. Can you beat it? Right. And, and, and for, for whatever reason, if you find something better, Stephen, I'll be the first one to say, let's go get it. Right. All right. Does that make sense? All right. So so with that said, I mean, are you are you comfortable moving forward and submitting the application or do you feel we still need to think about it? You know, that, that's that's just me. You know, I'm, I'm not going to push. And, and what I found by doing it that way, just being treating them like a human, treat them like, you know, I would want someone to treat my, my parent. Just make sure that you're educated about the decision that you're going to make, because, again, this is your decision. Right. You know, you know, how, and it's only going to affect you and your family. It's not going to affect me. Right. It's going to affect you and your family. I'm just going to let you make that decision. And what I found, I'm getting called back because, you know, this thing is a lot about timing. Yep. Right. Just because they submitted the request today or last week don't mean that they're actually ready to move right now. Right. OK. But but if you treat them right, what I'm seeing now is I get I get at least one or two calls a week where, where they're calling me back. Hey, Brandon. You know, we, um, we 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 had time to think about it. You know, we, we now you know we're comfortable. We know exactly where we want to be. Um, we're ready to go. Um, are you available now? Or do we need to set up another time to get back on the phone with you? Okay. And, and, and I had one just a couple of weeks ago and he called me up. I spoke with him almost two months ago, went over everything, treated him right. He called me up. Hey, Brandon, we're ready to go. We talked about it. You know, I think we're, we're comfortable at 400 a month. Damn. Mm. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> That's what I said, you know? And so for me, it's just about, you know, just treating them right, not being a prick, you know, because they're going to remember like who 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 treated them right, and, right. and they're going to go back go back to that person. You know, so that's that's the way I'm playing it at this time. That's the that's the biggest thing that I see with virtual and face to face is with face to face. I can be very aggressive in the close. No, you're yep. making the decision that I'm not coming back. Correct. Do that on the phone. Dude, they're just going to hang up on you. Exactly. Right. The other thing I will say, and this is a good thing, because everybody was wondering this back then. The virtual persistency is actually higher than face-to-face. -face. You know why? Because you're not closing people that you're not supposed to close. Try right. out. If they're not giving you bank info, they're not giving you bank info. Right. In the house, I'm getting you to give me the bank info. Yeah. I'm that good, you know, in that sense. Um, that's where persistency changes, right? You're not supposed to close business that you shouldn't close. Um, that's what I've realized. Like, like I, I saw Colton's persistency shoot up, shoot up 13% uh. doing virtual. Because he was like, dude, I'm not closing. I'm not closing as much, but what I'm closing is sticking. It's sticking. Right? And so in our line of business, renewals, the business that stays is the business that pays. Right. Right? You're not trying to turn business like you're, you're chasing something. So that's cool, man. Um, and that's the other thing is like, think about this. Some of you guys on here have called clients that have bought something over the phone and they won't let anybody in. Like, that's what you want to do. You want to be that agent. You want to be that competent that like you close your client and they're so happy with you that the next time someone calls, they give them the, I already got a 10 care of, stop calling me. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I got what I need. You know, like I'm not interested anymore because I already got it. Like click, like you want your clients to do that to people. And so like, especially in the virtual, you know, side of things, it's, it's a lot easier to be able to be that solid on close. Because here's the thing, what you, what you said is, I used to say very similar things in the house. I'm like, do you find something that's better than what I offered you? Let me know, because I want to get appointed with them to protect my other clients. Correct. I, I, it was a bluff, dude. They're not finding anything better than I can. No. And if they did, they were going to show me before they called and I would rip that thing apart because it was not what they thought it was. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So um, that's the other thing is as, as, as you get better in what we do, study not just what we do, but study our competition. Dude, like I just met with a guy that came from a final expense captive agency, big company, been around for like 30 years. And um, I said, hey, man, how does your products work? He goes, we're a captive agency. So we only have one carrier. That one carrier has three products. It has a level product. 
It has a graded product and it has a 20 pay. I was like, got it. So like how much, I, I said, how much business actually goes through level versus graded? He goes 50, 50. And I was like, what? He's like 50% of our business goes through level and the other 50% of our business goes through graded. I was like, so I asked him comp. I was like, what was your comp on your, your level? He said, you know, 90%, right? I said, what's your comp on graded? 40. I was like, I want to throw up. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, I was like, you want to know the best part about working with family first life is? He's like, what? I was like, the clients that you put through graded would be level with us. He's like, what? I was like, so I had Colton in the room. I said, Colton, how much business in final expense do you write as level versus graded? He goes, 95. I'm like, exactly. So we started talking. I'm like, dude, COPD is level with yeah. us because we have Aetna. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Diabetes is level with us with almost every carrier. You know what I mean? Like a lot of these things that other carriers don't like, we take level. So you're legitimately putting your client in the best product possible. And then what happens is when they try to shop it and find it, they can't. Mm. So you're legitimate, like when, when I give them that line of like, hey, go ahead and try to shop me and beat my product. I don't care. And if you do find something better, let me know. I would love to find out. Yep. And if you do, I'm going to go contract with that carrier so I can protect my other families, yep. right? They can't. I've said that line for three years. <laughs> and, and me, and I got it from you. So I, I've said it for two and a half years. And right. one client has, I haven't had one client shop it yet. Right. Because you know, so, by me saying that, it's really giving them just the, you know, making it's reassurance that I'm confident in what I'm doing. Correct. You know, and, and see like every, this is, this, this is a mess. Some of you guys up. I sold by disagreeing with my clients. Watch this. My clients would think they would watch an ad on TV, 999, 995, whatever units, this, that, and the other. Right. I, I didn't argue with my clients, but I disagreed with them. Hey, that policy you have doesn't work the way you think it works this way. Don't believe me? Go grab it. I'll read the paperwork in front of you. I'll highlight it, matter of fact, and give it back to you, right? Oh, that ad you got in the mail? Bring it out. Let me highlight it and show you exactly what to look for. Oh, that rate you thought that was real? Let's go on their website and pull the rating, yeah, the cool tool, right? And I was always in disagreeing. I was always disagreeing with my clients. And all of a sudden, they're like, man, this guy knows what he's talking about. So if he's telling me this is good for me, it's probably good for me. Mm -hmm. See, that's where it got really good. Like when I knew our products, I was cool. I sold like 15, 20 families, a, you know, a month. But when I knew what our competitors did, like one of our competitors, I can't say the name, obviously. Mm -hmm. But one of our competitors, if you're 65 years old and you take no meds, you're automatically graded. Just because of age. Just because of age. Final expense carry. Right? Like how weird is that? But like, if you didn't know that, how are you going to rip it apart? You know, one of those companies that sell via the mail product goes up every five years. Yep. If you don't know that, you're going to go like, man, that client's price is cheaper than mine. Yeah, because in the next five years, it's going up. And then five years after that, it's way more expensive than yours. And then after that, it's blown out. But you don't know that. So for me, I got I, I when you run in our industry, you kind of see which companies pop up and you have a general idea of why they do what they do. See the other, like when I used to get clients to give me their policies, I never asked for premium or I care less. I would always go, Hey, I just want to look at the medical underwriting questions because I want to say, I want to see what you said yes or no to. So I can speed up my underwriting so I can get it out of here quicker. They wanted me out of their house. I wanted to look at their underwriting so I can see what they said yes or no to. They go, oh, you said yes to COPD. This is great. Perfect. I'll put you in at its level. Yeah. You know, like it's very rarely am I doing price for price, coverage to coverage, you know, replacements. But anyways, hey, if you guys have any questions, drop them in the Q&A or the chat. Yes, I know we have a few. Yes, yeah, I know. So um, this is a really good one, Brian. I'm going to have you hit this. When they, tell, when they tell me they already have it taken care of, um, before I can fire back at them, they end up hanging up and they, you know, the same ones that say they're not interested. How do you handle those clients? I try calling them back, but they don't answer. So what do you do in those ones? I just keep it moving. I mean, that's, that's the mind, the mindset, my mindset. And, and I saw Chris asked another question too about the mindset. Um, so I can kind of put both of these together. 
Um, but my mindset going into my Dow days, you know, working virtually is um, I'm just trying to, I'm just only there to work with the people that are serious. Yep. That's it. The people that are serious, that are ready to go right now, the ones that are playing games, you know, acting up, I get them off my phone as soon as possible. And I move and I move to the next one because my mindset every day that I'm working, that I'm dialing on the phone is just to help two families per day. Two that's families my, a day. That's my mindset. Two yep. families per day. When I, when I show my offers, my offers line up with what I'm looking for. Okay. Um, you know, when I show my offers, 80 to 120, 120 to, uh, you know, uh, what was that? 50 to 80, 80 to 120, 120 to 200. There's a reason why I lay my, my options out that way. Um, because we, we all know when we put three options on the table, which one do they choose? Middle one. The middle one, right? So that's why my options are exactly where they're at. 50 to 80, 80 to 120, um, uh, 120 to 200. If you do the print, the math on that 80 to 120, that gives me a thousand to 1400 yep. every time. And that's all I want. That's all I'm aiming for with, with each client that, that I have over the phone is a thousand to 1400. I get two of those a day. That's two, that's two to 2000, you know, to 20, you know, well, you know what I'm saying, right? You know, I'm sorry about that, but just trying to get there because now that's going to get me to my 10 to 15 families, right? right. For, for the week. So that's, that's why my options are, are the way they are. But again, just two families a day. And if you're working five, six days a week on the phone, two families a day gets you to 10, 12 plus families per week. I love that. Um, one of the questions that came in, and, and I think this is a good one, is how do you deal with families that get back to you with, oh, I just want to quote, or I just wanted to see how much it costs? Um, well, with that, I, I'm just going to ask them because I'm not going to just give them what they want. You know, so I'm going to ask them, you know, what, what is the quote for? Okay, you, you just want to quote, see what is the, what, what, Direct. What, yeah, <laughs> what, what is the quote for? What, what, what do you need the quote for? Right. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about why do you need the quote or how many quotes have you gotten in the past? OK, when was the last time you got a quote, Stephen? Right. Oh, you just got one last month. Did you get any younger? Did you get any healthier? Mm. No. So you're expecting the quote to change. Right. It's going to be somewhere around the same place that it was when you looked at it a month ago, Stephen. The, the, the biggest the biggest death benefits. Yeah, the bigger question is, are you ready to, you know, to get an approval and protect your family? Because uh, I was leading right to that because quotes don't pay death benefits, Stephen. Okay, you can have a thousand quotes laying around, something happens to you, your family gets nothing. Right. Okay. I, I'm the underwriter. My job is to get you, get you approved. You know, if, if you're looking for quotes, I can send the, the, the quote team out. Okay, it's going to take about, they're going to need about two hours every time. You know, got, they got this big old presentation they're going to be doing. They're going to have the, the nurse with them to take blood and urine. You, you, you want quotes? I'll, I'll, I'll dispatch the sales team out. Right. Okay. My, I'm the underwriter. My job is to help you get it done without blood, urine, all those things. I, I thought that's maybe what you were looking for. Dude, the other thing I tell people is like, yeah, I'm going to give you a quote, but these are the things I'm going to let you know before we give you that quote. <laughs> if the quote fits, we're going to get a check. <laughs> we're going to get a driver's license to social and we're submitting an application. I quote you all day long, but if, you, if that quote isn't qualified for your health, they don't matter. I tell clients that all the time. So like before I give them quotes, John, because Jonathan Medina is asking that question, I ask them financial inventory questions. Yeah, I have no problem giving you a quote today. Before I give you that, I need to ask a few questions. Boom, ask them, hey, high blood pressure, you know, you know, heart attack, stroke, cancer, all that. Why? Because if they give me any major medical issue, I'm like, ha, you, you can't get a quote because you don't, you're not healthy enough to shop. Sorry. If you were healthy enough, like if you had nothing, all right, dude, I got to give you, you know, you're, we're quoting, but like, you're not healthy enough. You got cancer, bro. Like nobody's going to take you. This company will give you the coverage. You're not getting anything else. I promise you, you can beat it. I pay you a thousand bucks. I've done that with clients. And they're like, they're like, this guy's crazy. Why? Because I know my product. I know my competitors. I know what I can do. Right. Hey, you, you had cancer two years ago. Okay. Our company will take you level while most of them out there won't. Don't believe me. Go try Go ahead. And the other thing is when you keep submitting applications and quotes everywhere, the insurance companies share that in a database yep. and therefore they don't want to insure you anymore because they think that you're trying to get too much insurance because they feel like you're going to die. Uh -huh. I don't get quotes for life insurance 10 times a week. I tell clients this, John. So, you know, that's, that was my answer to that. Um, yeah, I mean, just multiple ways to, to, to attack it, you know, yeah. but just, 
you know, put it back in their face, make them, make them, you know, start answering questions and respect what you're doing. Right. Um, Ishmael asks, how many leads do you buy a week? Um, I would say, I mean, for, for a new agent, you need, you, you need no less. And, and all I can really talk about at this time is when I was at, in the new agent phase. Um, I mean, for me, I'm at 20, 2,500 a week on leads that may get me anywhere from a hundred to 150 leads um, at 2,500 because I'm running mortgage, right? Um, but for a new agent, if you're in the CRM, you're working out of the CRM, it's, it's mandatory that I mean, if, you, if you're working with instance, you need at least, you need at least 100 per dial session, okay? It, it, at least 100 per dial session. And, and again, I'm saying per dial session. That means if you're dialing on Monday, you need 100. You dial on Thursday, you need another 100. OK, um, and, and if you're using anything less than that, you're using some one months, some three months, anything like that, you need 200. You, you need 200 per dial day. You know, if, if you really if you're really looking to go out and protect a, um, a lot of families, then you, you have to stack the deck in your favor. 100 percent. See, that's the other thing. Like people go, what's your lead blend? I'm like everything. They're like, what? Like people ask me this or like when you went to Hall of Fame, you were only running mortgage. Huh? I was like, no, not true. I was like, matter of fact, one of my favorite lead vendors, everybody hates. They're like, why? I'm like, because at the end of the day, I just want someone to know that they want life insurance. If yeah, they yeah. want life insurance and they know I'm coming over or we have an appointment, I'm good. Don't matter if it's final expense, mortgage, internet leads. Dude, like we had an internet lead vendor, like that was back then, was so bad. I bought 250 leads and set 15 appointments. But I closed 14 out of the 15 for a lot of premium. Why? Because the people yeah. that like I sat with, they're like, I was like, hey, you know this for life insurance, right? They're like, yeah, dude, like why else would you be here? I was like, oh, okay, cool. So boom, laid out the plans and they always took something because they knew what they wanted. Yeah. Which and, and, they wanted. and that's why I love the internet leads. Let's talk about that real quick. Like they don't understand like, yes, you know, we're getting mortgage protection leads for $80, $90 a piece, but how many times do you call a mortgage protection client and, they, and then they're like, oh, this is life insurance. Right? Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're like, and then when they find out it's life insurance, they're like, oh, I'm not interested. I thought this was mortgage protection. I'm like, yes, it is. Anything that pays that death, oh, right. life insurance umbrella, now I got to paint the picture to them to get them back around so that we can go through the appointment to get the protection in place. Right. So, mortgage protection and final expenses is just a play on words for life insurance, that's, right? It's an angle. That's, that's, yeah, that's why I love the internet lead so much because that's the one lead that you don't have to beat around the bush right? They, they're looking for life insurance. So when you call, you're like talking about this state discounted life insurance programs, right? You don't have to say, oh, the mortgage protection, the final expense, you know, they, they know it's life insurance. You can say that it's life insurance and they're ready to purchase life insurance, right? Right. I love that. Um, Brandon, this is for you. Marjorie asked, do you ever call people back who say that they're not interested or who, who are rude to you after a few days or do you just put them away in a do not call list? Yeah, when it was just me, yes, I would call them back like the next week because they they won't remember that 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 they spoke with you, you yeah. know. Um, yeah, I, I would call them back and put them back in line for the next week and call them back again, and then I might call this time, you know, and call as the appointment setter. So yeah. I might call as Michael next week. Hey, my name is Michael, appointment setter here for the for the underwriter. Right. You know, looking, looking to get this book, um, but now you know I'm at a stage now where I just pass those leads to my agents. Right. You know, See, the I'm other thing them. is, you know, people go, well, that's like they already told you no. Why are you calling them back? Well, dude, people have bad days. Yeah. Like if you called me when my stress was here because like the kids are crying and you know something bad happened at work and she's got a fight with my wife and you call me to try to sell me life insurance that day, I'd probably cuss you out too. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean I'm a horrible person. It means I had a bad day. You call me a week later, things are good. I might answer and talk to you, right? Mm -hmm. Dude, some of the best people I've closed are people that I've called back after they cussed me out and I pretended like I didn't know when I clearly was making that call like this guy screamed at me last week then I call him and they're like, I'm like Brandon he's like yes and I'm like hey this is Steven and they're like the nicest people after it's weird people have bad days too just like we do right um goes back to you know Chris asked a question I'm gonna piggyback on this too I don't write notes on my leads I don't keep track of how many times I call the only time I take a lead out of my batch is if they if I sit on them or if I call them so many times and they tell me, you know, go pound sand. Like, I don't take, I don't write notes on my leads because it's deflating. Can you imagine? Because what I do is I tripled out three times a day. So I put like February 15th, 
seven and you know, 7.45 a.m., no answer, three X, three times. You know, February 15th, 12 p.m., no answer, three times. February 15th, you know, 4 p.m., no answer, three. And then like the 16th and then the 17th. And the next time I pick up the lead, I'm like, this guy hasn't called, you know, he has an answer on 27 calls. Well, like that's deflating. And so what I've done to tell you the truth, Chris, is like, I've actually called some of those people like the 30th and 40th time we book them and we close them. So I, I don't put notes on my leads. I'll work them until they say an appointment or they, you know, tell me to go pound sand multiple times. So um, Andrew said, is there a cheat sheet to help debunk know what the competitor's policies are? No, there isn't. No. Nope that's illegal to tell you the truth. So um, what you should do, Andrew, is you should reach out to the manager you work with and they know those companies. Any right. VP or anybody that sells at a high clip knows the competitors. So that's what you should do. Um, right. um, Don said, can you speak on cost strategy? Examples, rings per calls, messages, text messages, all that stuff. Oh, yeah, so so I, I I just make a game out of it myself. It just all depends on how I feel that day, what game I'm going to play, um, you know, in terms of dialing. You know, you can do the traditional let it, you know, dial, let it ring through to the to the voicemail three times. You can do that. Um, you know, you can also, you know, dial it first time, let it ring through to the voicemail to try to gain some intel. You know, if the lead is William, you get the voicemail that says, hey, this is Bill. Now you got some intel. So when you mm -hmm. do get him on the phone, you're not going to say, hey, William, you're going to say, hey, Bill, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, what what I found that works best for me is, is a, a strategy that I got from Dominique Rogers, right? Um, and what I do is I'll call that first time. The first time I'll call, let it rain once or twice, I hang up. I call back, right back. Second time, let it rain once or twice, hang up. And then I call back the third time, and then I let it rain through. Right. OK, that has been the, the has gotten me the most success, su successful um, pickups, because you think about it, if you your phone starts ringing, you look at it, the answer, it stops. You put it down it starts ringing again. You look at it, the answer, it stops. And then you put it and then it starts ringing again and it keeps ringing. You're like, hold up, who is this? Hello. Yep. I get them every I get them every time, you know, and then if they have any attitude about, oh, why are you calling? Hey, I apologize. Stephen phone system been acting up all morning. <laughs> but I got you now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Blame it on the phone system. But that, yeah, that, that gets me more answers than anything. That was the best part. I remember watching Andrew one time call a lead 10 times in a row. And I was like, what are you doing? Guy answers the phone. And, and the guy's like, why are you calling me so much? Andrew, Andrew goes, it's company policy. I called you 10 times. So instead of spreading it through 10 days, I just figure I called you 10 times in a row. Anyways, since you're on the phone, my name is Andrew. I'm getting back to you about the phone. And I was like, that's a stud. You got to have fun with this stuff too, by the way. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Like, cause dude, like it's Absolutely. hard. It's stressful enough. Like enjoy it. Like have some fun. Yeah. That's why I'm like, be yourself and talk to clients and have a conversation. Don't be so scripted. But right. um, last question, as we wrap this up, this, um, I have my answer, but I want Brandon to give you the answer too. Um, how do you overcome the objection if they keep interrupting and repeating that they didn't request the info in spite of you already answering that objection and trying to proceed with verifying information? So for me, if they if they're adamant that they did not submit the request, okay, if they're adamant about that, then I then what I'm going to ask you is, okay, Stephen, so you didn't submit it. That's totally fine. I understand. So tell me this, Stephen, who loves you enough that they that they would have submitted this request to make sure that you have the best coverage in place at this time? That's a good one, right? Who and and, and it's a reason why I do that. Um, I talk about the experience that I had um, back in Birmingham last year when I was over there dialing, you know, last year with the new agent in Birmingham, and I had a lead. Um, the name on the lead was Fat Man Jones. Okay, the name on the lead was Fat Man Jones. He was 21 years old, and I hit and I called him up. I said, hey, what's up, Fat Man? Don't hang up. I'm not a telemarketer. Just getting back to you about the the discounted life insurance program. He's like, he's like, ah, uh, he's like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, yeah, this was, you know, the request is submitted. The date of birth is this, you know, for the life insurance. Man, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, fat man, tell me this. Who loves you enough that they might have would have submitted this request to make sure you have the best coverage at this time? Man, it sounds like something my mama might have did. Okay, mm -hmm. let me get mama. Let me get mama name and number. Bam. He he gave me mama name and number. I called. I got off the phone with him. Called mama. Hey, Mama Jones, how you doing? My name is Brandon. Getting back to you for the uh, life insurance request. Um, you know that was submitted over for Fat Man. Um, he said that maybe you done you did it on his behalf. She said, "Yep, I sure did. Wow. I sure did." He out here running around in these games and stuff. You know, I need to get something, and so I ain't out here wow. doing no GoFundMe's, right? And I helped her 
put a plan on Fat Man, okay? Wow put a plan on fat man to protect herself. So you, you always got to keep that in the back of your mind as well. It might not be the person whose name is on the lead that actually submitted, submitted the request. It might be, it might be the spouse where you have some guys that are so headstrong, you know, the wife is saying we need life insurance and the husband is like, no, we don't, I'm not going to die. Right. You know, I, I'm immortal. I'm not going to die. You know, we don't need life insurance, but she's, she's tossing and turning all night every night because she knows that if something happens to him, she's up the creek without a paddle, right? And so, so she goes, you know, so she goes online, submits the request in hopes that somebody can come out here and do their job and make him protect her, right? You know what I'm saying? And make him protect her at this time. So you have to always have that in the back of your mind. It might not be that person, but somebody did because these requests don't submit themselves. You know, they, they just don't come up out of the blue. Somebody had to complete a 15 page survey for this to be turned into a lead. Love that. Yeah, we're going to end with that because uh, my answer was not that good. <laughs> my answer was get a new lead. <laughs> but you can do what Brandon did. That's why he sells a lot too. But, you know, yeah, no, that's true. Good. It's someone filled that form out. Dude, like, yeah. they don't, those, here's the other part. Like, I have fun with those two. Oh, you didn't send this out? I, when I, you know, when I was younger, at least I, I used to do that. You didn't send that out? Hold on one second. Let's call, you know, Mesa Police Department. Someone out there putting fake information with your information all over the place. And I'd, and I'd see what they say. I have fun with it. Never, now, I'd never call the cops, but I was just having fun with it. Because, dude, I don't have your name, date of birth, address, phone number, you know, height and weight, income. Like, I don't have any of that. There's no way I have all that stuff if someone didn't put it in for you. So, but um, the other thing, too, is, and I'll, I'll leave with this. Have so many leads that you don't really care have so many leads that like the people that treat you like that or say stupid stuff. I'm not worried about it. Cause I got another 150 people to call. That was, that was always my philosophy. See, like I, the reason why my no show rate was really, really low and not because my phone script was amazing was because I booked the people that I was supposed to book. Going right. back to it at the end of the day, I just wanted to know if you knew that I was coming out for life insurance. If you did and I did, we're good. You know? So Brandon, I appreciate you, man. That was fun. We're going to get this up on YouTube and, um, Thank you again, man. I appreciate you. And everybody, if Brandon did a good job, DM him, hit him on Instagram, Facebook, and tell him how wonderful that was. So I appreciate you, man. I, I'm excited to see what you do this year as well. So thank you again for taking time out your day to share this with our group. Appreciate everything you do, Brandon. Appreciate you, man. Sky points to high point. Let's go. Love it. Let's do it.